in the last lecture we learned what is a DTO and we also created a simple DTO if I go to VS code there we created this simple DTO and we are calling it as create user DTO and we learn that a DTO is nothing but a class with some properties so we are going to use this DTO to validate the request body which we are going to receive for a post request when creating a new user now when we are going to receive that request body before we use that request body to create a new user we might want to validate that request body and to do that what we are going to do is we are going to add some validation on these properties of this create user DTO and for that we are going to use a third party library called as class validator so let's go to the browser and if you open npmjs.com and there if you search for class validator it will take you to this documentation page for this class validator okay and what is this class validator this class validator allows use of decorator and non decorator based validation and this internally uses validator.js to perform validations and class validators works on both browser and node.js platforms so we are going to use this third party library this class validator library for creating a decorator based validator on these properties all right so if i scroll down here you can see the documentation for this class validator package and there if i scroll down you can see that we can install this package from npm so let's go ahead and let's install this class validator package from npm and the current version of this class validator package is 0.14.1 so if you are watching this lecture in the future where a new version of this class validator is available then i'll suggest you to install this 0.14.1 version only in order to follow along this course because it is possible that in the future version there is some changes and whatever i'm going to show here in this lecture might not work in the future okay so make sure that you install this version of class validator package so let's go to vs code and there let me open vs code built-in terminal all right let me clear everything here by typing this cls command and now we are going to type npm install and we want to install class validator package and which version do we want to install we want to install 0.14. Dot, and if i go back it is 0.14.1 so this is the version which you want to install now it is the latest version so if i don't specify this version in that case also it is going to install this version only but in future if the latest version is available and if you want to install a specific version like this then after the package name you can specify this at symbol and you can specify the version which you want to install for that package okay so here let me go ahead and let me press enter to install this package all right so the package has been installed and to check that we can go to package.json file and there if we go to the dependencies there you will see that this package class validator has been installed with this version all right now once this package is installed now we can go ahead and we can add some validators on these properties so for example what i want is this name gender and email these should be string values for that we can use this at is string okay now in order to use this is string which is a decorator we need to import it from this package from this class validator package so if i select here you will see that is string has been imported from this package from this class validator package and after this we also need to use a set of parentheses like this so name should be a string value then gender should be a string value and also email should be a string value okay so user should not be able to assign a numeric value or a boolean value for name gender or email now for the email the email should be a string value as well as it should be a proper email address right so for that we also have another very data which is is email so here we can also use is email so this is email will make sure that this email field it is a string value as well as it is a proper email address and again to use this is email validator we need to import it from 
this class validator package. Now what I also want is this gender field here, this should be an optional value. So when we want to create a user by making a post request at that time, if the user don't want to specify the gender, he can omit this property. Okay, so this property should be optional. If the user does not provide gender, in that case also, the user should be created. And to make a property optional, what we can do is, first of all, here we can specify a question mark saying that this property is optional. Or we can also use a validator for that. And that validator is, is optional. So here you can see we have that validator. So this will make sure that this property is optional. And again, in order to use this is optional validator, you can import it from class validator. So what this decorator will do, it will make this gender field as an optional field. Okay, then other thing is for this name property, we want the name to be a string value. That is okay. But for the name, if we pass empty string here like this then that empty string is also a string value and in this case that empty string will be assigned for this name property but this name property we don't want it to be empty we want this name property to have some string value it should not be an empty string and for that we have another validator and that is is not empty so this validator will make sure that this name property is not an empty string. If it is an empty string, in that case, this is not empty validator will throw an error. Okay. Then in the same way, we also have other validators. And if you want to check all those validators, what you can do is you can simply use at is, and then you will see a list of all the validators which you can use. For example, for a property, if you want to check if it contains only alpha or alpha numeric value, for that you can use these validators. If you want to check whether a property is receiving an array value or not, you can use this is array validator. And in the same way, we have many other validators. So, for example, you can see this is credit card, is currency, is date. So, these are the validators which you can use depending on your requirement. Here, I simply wanted to show you how you can use validators from this class validator package in order to validate the properties of a DTO. And here we saw an example of is string, is not empty, is optional, is email. In the same way, we also have properties like min length and max length. So you can see we have this min length. You can specify this min length if you want to have a minimum length for a property. In the same way, you will also have max length to specify what should be the maximum number of characters for a property. Then if you want to specify minimum value, minimum numeric value or maximum numeric value, you have this min validator and you will also have a max validator. Okay, so for example, if I type max, here you will have a max validator which you can use to set a maximum numeric value for a property. So in this way, we have a lot of validators, the validator decorators, which we can use from this class validator package. Here we have seen examples of few of them. Okay, but in this way, we have many validator decorators, which we can use in our DTO. For now, I want to keep things simple. So I want to do simple validations. Like I want to check this name should not be an empty string and it should contain a string value. This gender should be a string value and it should be optional. And this email should contain a proper email address. So these are the simple validations I want to do on this DTO. Later, we will also create some complex DTOs with some complex validation logic. Here, let me also go ahead and let me add a min length decorator. And here I'll specify that in the name, there should be a minimum of three characters. If we have less than three characters in the name, we will not consider it as a proper name, as a valid name. Okay. So this is how we can use validator decorators from this class validator package. Now here, each of these validator decorators takes an optional argument. And using that, you can also set a custom validation error message. If you don't specify that, then 
the built-in error message will be displayed if any of the validation fails but if you want to set a custom validation error message what you can do is here to this is string we are not passing any parameter so here we can pass an object like this in there we can specify message property and there we can say name should be a string value or you can specify a more meaningful error message if you want to so in this way we can specify an error message in the same way this min length is taking a parameter after that we can specify this object and there we can specify the message property so in this case we need to pass this object as the second argument and there let's say name should have a minimum of three characters okay and in the same way you can also specify a custom error message for all other validators so in this lecture we learned how we can validate the properties of a dto using this class validator package this class validator package provides some validator decorators these are the validator decorators okay all right so here we have created a dto and we are also validating the properties of this dto using validator decorators now in the next lecture we are going to connect this dto to the request body which we are going to receive for this post request on this user resource